Welcome at the ETE paint shop. Today I'm painting only a little bit with spray cans because what I like to do is woodworking. It's also a hobby of mine and I need a birthday present for one of my best friends. So I thought it would be a cool idea to take one of these fancy new machines and to do modern woodworking with a laser. And yes, it's simple as printing on a piece of paper. So if you have no clue how to do it, I like to show you the tricks, how to laser plywood and how to create a cool three-dimensional sign. So let's take some sheets of wood and let's start with the project. I use the Autor Laser Master 3 with a 10 watt laser head and a work area of 400 by 400 millimeter. The laser comes with an installation and quick start guide, air assist pump, a pair of safety goggles, some small test sheets of plywood and acrylic and the laser bed which is really useful if you don't want to burn the surface of your table or workbench. The laser bed measurements are only 380 mm so you lose 20 mm of the total work area if you want to use the Autor laser bed. I cut some formal poplar plywood to fit the size of the laser bed. Turn the keys to unlock the laser master 3 and make sure the emergency stop is also unlocked as well. Push the power button until it flashes white. The laser calibrates itself and the power button shines green when the laser is ready to run. I connected the Autour via USB to my laptop and opened the Lightburn software. Lightburn is free for the first 30 days and a powerful and easy to handle solution to control your laser. I moved the laser head to the highest point of the plywood to set the focus point. Just flip down the focus stick on the laser head, unlock the thumb screw on the laser and push down the laser head until the focus stick hits the plywood. Lock the thumb screw, fold the focus stick back on the laser head and you are ready to go. To find the best cut settings for the poplar plywood I started with a speed of 10 mm per second and 100% laser power. I cut only a small rectangle on the bottom side of the plywood to check if the laser cuts all through the material. Now I have to search on Google for the sign I like to cut. What I'm looking for is a vector file like an EPS, SVG, AI or a vector PDF. I save it on my hard drive and open the file direct in Lightburn. After some small adjustments I'm ready to do the cut. All my laser cuts are done and now I have a big box of puzzle pieces I like to paint but I run also in major issues with the laser but let me show you. The first problem I run into is that the laser couldn't cut through all the material after a while but only on one sheet and that's a combination of two issues and the issues are warping and power but what does that mean? Not every single sheet is absolutely plain and even. Sometimes you are a lucky guy and you have a plain sheet of plywood, but sometimes it's a little bit bent and warped like this one. And that can cause trouble because you have seen me adjusting the laser in the beginning. And what I did is I set the focal point on the material because the laser beam is not a single stroke like this. It's more like an X shape like so. And what I did is I'll set the focal point on the material. Here you have 100% power and here maybe 80% and what you have to do is you have to set the focal point on the material and now imagine the focal point is no longer on the material. It's underneath the material. Here are 100% and here maybe 80%. So you lose a lot of power and that's the first issue I run into and the major issue with these diode lasers is if they have stuck heat in the laser beam itself or in the uh, laser head you lose a lot of power and I have a diagram here when you start cutting you're at this point with 100% power that's the diode laser power and that's the heat and now imagine you cut maybe four to five sheets and heat stuck in the laser head and what happens is you get a curve like this. It starts slowly and increases a lot and here you have 100% power and at the end maybe only 50. So I lose power during the cuts 
and yeah, what can I do? How can I solve the issue with more power? But I started with 100% power with my cuts, so I can't increase the power. So what I can do is more passes. I started with only one pass. And at the end, I used two passes. And that means it cuts the sheet twice, or you can do three passes and it increases the power. So I use 100% at the first pass and another 100% at the second one, so I could solve the issue. And the next issue I run into was an issue with the speed. You have seen me cutting and engraving these two pieces. The cut was perfect, but the engraving was a bit weird. All my lettering has strange bends, and that's an issue caused by speed. Autour claims a speed of 20,000 mm per minute, which is 333.3 mm per second. So let's say 300, which is easier. And I applied these 300 mm per second, and I run in this issue. That's how my letters looked like. They have straight, strange bends and no straight edges. And what the laser tries is, it tries to corner. What does that mean? That's a vector graphic, it's not a picture. And it contains of different points on every of these edges. And what the laser does it is it comes and now it has to corner like this for a straight edge. But when you apply too much speed, what the laser does is it tries to corner, but it couldn't do it because of the bend of the belt drive. And the bend of the belt drive causes exactly these issues because the laser head is too fast. There's too much weight on the, on the belt drive. And every time it has to corner, it loses these wire shapes. So I started with 300 millimeter per second and I decreased the speed to 150 millimeter per second. And what happened is my lines start to look better, but at the end I had to do only 60 millimeter per second. So if you do an artwork which contains these lines, you have to do 60 millimeter per second, never 20,000 millimeter per minute. You can apply this maybe if you do a line work when you like to engrave pictures because pictures have uh, single pixels and what the laser does when it engraves a picture is it goes line after line like this and maybe you can increase the speed when you do the line work but when you have to corner like on the E you have to do it slow with a maximum of 60 millimeter per seconds and the issue is solved. For a cool three-dimensional sun it's necessary to paint all the parts we have cut with the laser and I have a bin with all these small parts and I like to show you a cool trick how to paint them simple and easy. And what you can use are saw horses and a piece of scrap wood if you have because there will be paint dust on the board don't paint these parts on the floor. When you're working on the ground like so and then you like to spray these parts with a spray can, you will run in trouble because you can't flip the spray can upside down. There's a thin straw in the can and the aerosols will be on the bottom of the can and you will spray only aerosol, no color. Let's try it. And that's a huge issue. So when you flip the can again, you have no chance to reach the sides of the parts you like to paint. Also a bad idea. And that is the reason why you have to work on saw horses if you use spray cans. The next issue when working with spray cans is the pressure inside the can. So we have to fix these parts on the board. If we don't do it, the pressure in the can and the aerosols will blow the parts off the board. Let's check this out. What you can do is to solve the issue, you can glue the parts on the board or you can use double-sided tape, but all these solutions are not the best because you have a hard time peeling off all these parts. The double-sided tape is too strong, also most of the glues, and in some cases you can break these parts. And I have a cool trick. What I'm using is masking tape because it sticks well, but not too much. And what I'm doing is I'm sticking the tape on the board but sticky side upside down, not to the board, like so. I wrap it around 
And now I have a sticky surface and I can stick on all the parts and they will not blow off when painting. The first set of the painted parts has to cure for an hour and in the meantime I will glue up my wall mount. I made it in three layers of wood so I have to glue them together and that's the wall mount. You can screw it onto a wall and the sign hangs here. I like it very much so let's glue these parts and let's paint them as well. Yeah, that's the finished Alfa Romeo sign, three-dimensional like made on a CNC and that's exactly what I like. It's a present for one of my best friends, he has birthday today and we all drive Alfa Romeo so I hope that will be a good present for an Alfa Romeo driver. But what can I say about the laser? It's a tough little machine, you can do several things like wood, you can do also acrylic. It's not made for metal, the laser has not enough power to cut any metal, but it's a small machine with a small footprint, perfect for a small shop like this. Or if you run a gift shop where you like to engrave and cut smaller presents, personalized presents, that can be a machine for you. Or Tour claims also to cut bigger wood blocks uh, up to 20 millimeters, so I tested the pine wood they claim. And my pine wood is 90 millimeter. Yes, it's possible to cut the pine. It takes time, of course, 10 passes, but it's possible. So if you have a difficult shape you like to cut in wood, that can be also a machine for you. That's what I can say. Thanks, Artur, for letting me testing this cool laser. Would I buy it again? Of course, because check this big sign. It's really big compared to my Martin Gray sign. And that's possible on such a small laser. So yes, I would buy it again. Thank you for watching. I'm on my way to a party. See you in my next video. Goodbye.